Let's talk about table reads and why they're so important. Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. And now on to our topic. Let's talk about table reads and why they're so important. So just this past week, I had the pleasure of attending a table read for a cute little rom-com movie that will be coming soon to a streaming service near you later this year. No, I wasn't cast. (laughs) No, 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 I, I didn't even audition for it. No, no, I was brought in to read stage directions. You know, we open on an idyllic suburb in any town USA as we see our hero, Chuck Flanagan, walking his purebred basset hound down the street as he waves to his neighbors, cut to, etc., etc. And this was not my first table read. No, no, no. Between Brooke and myself, we have attended dozens of table reads over the last 20 years, sometimes as members of the cast, but most of the time we are brought in as utility readers. In fact, most of the casting directors here in the Southeast have us on speed dial and will bring us in on occasion to be these utility readers. It's a fascinating experience, no matter why you're there. And it occurs to me that many actors don't know the function of a table read and what your job is if you've been brought in for one. And as a result, you could end up standing out for the wrong reasons. Spoiler alert, cast members have been fired from table reads in the past. And if you're brought in as a utility reader, yes, there is a chance you could end up getting cast in the film as a result of the experience. So jobs are literally on the line. But let's split this discussion into two parts. First, we'll talk about when you're brought in as a utility reader. And second, we'll talk about when you're an actual cast member who's been invited to the table read. Part one, when you're just a reader. Interior, table read, 2008, day. Back before the industry really took off here in Georgia, table reads were less common. And the first few I did were voluntary, non-paid. It was a favor to casting with the promise of potentially making an impression on the producers, the director, writers, the bigwigs that would be in attendance. And let's be clear, it's a huge compliment if a casting director requests you to be there as a utility reader. It means that not only have you established a level of talent with that casting office, but more importantly, you've established a level of professionalism. Cut to today and almost every table read will be paid if you're being brought in as a utility reader. If you're already cast in the show, don't expect to get paid. It's considered a courtesy to show up at the table read and rarely does that result in payment. And the pay scale for a utility reader has quite a wide range. I remember the first table read I got paid at years and years ago. It paid whatever the equivalent was for a background actor for the day. I think it was around $90. That was the Southeastern rate at the time. Nowadays, you can expect more than that. Sometimes a whole lot more than that, depending on the needs of the actual production. Some table reads, especially for some big budget TV shows, can be multiple days if you're reading all the episodes, for instance. Just ask Brooke about that situation. But regardless of the pay, if I'm hired to come in as a utility reader, one of a few things are going to be expected of me. I'll either be male reader number one or maybe number two. I'll be asked to come in to read stage directions. And then there's a wild card situation that can crop up that I'll talk about later. If you've been hired as male reader number one or two or female reader one or two, then when you show up at the actual space where the table read is being held. It'll be usually a rectangle of tables with chairs and little placards with your name on it somewhere around that table. It might just say male reader number one, but also expect to say Matthew Cornwell or whatever your name is. And at your actual seat, there will already be a script printed out for you on the table there, usually with a bottle of water and a few other things like a notepad, a pen, and a highlighter. Right away, you should look for a sticky note that might have the characters that you're going to be assigned to read, or it might be written on the title page of the script itself, or you may have been emailed that information the day before the actual table read. Be prepared for there to be four, five, ten different characters you're going to read. On occasion, you're there to fill in for one specific character, a a lead character, but that's rare. It's almost always the case where you'll have multiple characters you're reading. And the reason they need you there is because those roles either haven't been cast yet, or if it's a lead actor, maybe they haven't flown in yet, or they're 
busy shooting another episode of the TV show, The Day of the Table Read, or it's a series of characters that are just too small to have invited them to the table read. Side note, if you are one of those actors who did not get invited to the table read in a project that you've been cast in, don't take offense to that. They have a limited number of spaces and they can't invite everyone to that table read. Speaking of people who will be there, you should expect to see the director there, the director of photography, first AD, most often the second AD, although sometimes they float and disappear and come back. You'll see the writers for that project, producers, studio and network executives. Oftentimes it's a mixture of all of them in the room. Sometimes they're on a conference call or a Zoom call because they can't physically be in the room with you. Now, if you weren't emailed your script and roles ahead of time, then please spend some time before the table read starts familiarizing yourself with the script. Now, this also means you need to show up early and be careful because if this is a place you've never been to before, and especially if they have a gate with security, it's going to take you time to find the location, navigate the parking lot, figure out where you're supposed to be at the production office, and then actually get settled in the room. So let's assume you did arrive early and you've gotten settled and there's 15, 20, 30 minutes before the table read begins, depending on what your call time was for the table read. Take some time and work through the script page by page and highlight your lines. Like I said, they will have provided a highlighter for you. Now, sometimes a PA has gone through and highlighted your roles already for you, and that's great. But they're a human and they were doing this very quickly for you and maybe three or four or five other table readers. So double check their work. You still need to go page by page and make sure that all of the characters you're supposed to read have been highlighted. Also take note of any group lines or lines that say everyone because the PA who highlighted your script may have missed that. And it's kind of awkward when you get to a point where the whole room is supposed to erupt and no one says anything be ready to jump in, or you can just ask for clarification ahead of time as to whether or not you're supposed to chime in on those everyone lines. Next, if you're reading some of the bigger roles in the script, please double check all of those placards around the table and make sure that they're not actually going to show up that day. It can be really awkward if you're excited to read this number four on the call sheet and right when you go to start speaking, they speak with you because they're there and now you feel weird. So just ask a PA or an AD, is so-and-so actually absent today or did they make it after all? Okay, now that you have the logistics out of the way, you need to spend some time with the script, getting to know your characters and trying to figure out the tone of the script, the pacing, etc. And if you're playing like 10 characters, take some time to figure out the nuanced differences with those characters, the different POVs that they have, the attitude, the pacing of those different lines, etc. Just don't ruin the scene because you're ice cold on the lines. I've seen that happen a lot. And this brings me to the overall point of these table reads. They are not trivial. Often, it's the first time that the producers, the writers, and the director have had everyone together to hear all of the dialogue out loud with the primary cast members. Also, it's usually the first time the cast is meeting each other. Beyond that, the writers, the director, producers, they're listening to the pacing of the dialogue, the flow of it, to make sure that they don't need to make additional edits. The network, the studio, the people paying for this project are also interested in the runtime because that could affect the budget literally. So please, for the love of everything that is holy, treat the table read very seriously, no matter why you are there. If you do, and if you have fun at the same time, not a contradiction, you will get noticed. Sometimes just by the AD that hired you. In fact, this table read that I attended last week, the second AD hired me directly because he remembered me from a different table read a few years back. And yes, you can get cast off of a table read. Years ago, I was asked to be the male reader for the pilot episode, the, the table reading for Quantico. A couple days after that table read where I had read all the male characters, I was offered the role of convenience store clerk. No audition necessary. No key without a purchase. And there was another situation where I was at a table read for a big budget movie. And shortly after the table read, I received a mysterious audition, even though no one else was auditioning for roles at this point, for a small little bit part that I ended up booking 
that ended up getting cut. Womp womp. So even though there is an incentive to do a good job at the table read, don't get cocky. This isn't about you. Don't mess with the lines in the script. Even if the celebrities who are at the table read are massaging lines and improvising, that is not, I repeat, it is not an invitation for you to do the same. Don't change the words. Honor what the writer wrote because they are literally sitting next to you. Additionally, don't do crazy voices unless asked to by someone with the authority to do that. Now, definitely have a nuanced distinction between the seven-year-old that you're reading and the 70-year-old who you're reading as well. But just don't take this as the opportunity to grandstand with all of your vocal talent. But speaking of your vocal talent, volume matters. Even if the leads are speaking with the Hollywood whisper, which... That's a story for another time. You should be speaking with your diaphragm using your chest voice. This is where your vocal training and or your theater background will serve you. I remember at a table read for season one of The Walking Dead, uh, Andrew Lincoln, who played Rick, the lead character, was sitting about 25 feet away from me. But I happened to be reading for several characters, including his son, Carl, who was maybe 10 years old at this point in the first season. And Lincoln was doing the Hollywood whisper, and he continued to do that for the entire run of the show, but I couldn't hear any of his dialogue. And when those were my cues, when I was playing Carl, it was extremely nerve wracking because I'm sitting there trying to read his lips as to when it's, oh, it's my line. Ugh. Now, of course, he's number one on the call sheet. He can do whatever the heck he wants. But as a utility reader, I should not follow suit. I need to be loud enough that everyone around the table can hear me. And it's not just about those people in the room. They're recording this table read. Or they will have people from L.A. or New York on a conference call or on a Zoom call who need to hear everything going on. And if there are limited microphones in the space, they're going to put those with those lead actors so that they can be heard. And you might not have a microphone anywhere near you. So you do need to speak up, please. Now, most of that was in regards to reading multiple characters. Let me talk briefly about reading stage directions. If you've been requested to do that, first of all, good luck. We're all counting on you. It is a tough job. You need to have good eyes. Mine are brown and a lot of stamina. So be sure to warm your voice up ahead of time and have plenty of water or tea within arm's reach throughout the course of the read. If you get the script a day or two ahead of time, great. Go through it and mark up the stage directions so that you are more prepared on the day of the read. Because nearly 100% of the time, they do not want you to read every word on the page. They want you to summarize those big chunks of stage direction. Now, if you're really good, you can try to summarize on the fly, but I do not recommend that. It is very taxing to do that for a 90 or 120 page script or multiple episodes of a TV show in one day. You also need to get used to skipping over acting notes. If a stage direction in the middle of a dialogue scene says, he thinks, don't say that. The actor will just go ahead and think. Or if it says, she smiles, don't say that either because the actress will smile organically in that moment. If you try to jump in and say those stage directions in the middle of a flowing scene of dialogue, you're just going to interrupt that flow and the actors might look at you funny or the director might look at you funny. So don't say the acting notes out loud. Focus on entrances, exits, props being introduced, sound effects that are important, things of that nature. Transitioning from one scene to the next. And in those dialogue heavy scenes where you're really not sure how much of those interstitial stage directions you should read or not, follow the lead of the actors. If they just jump over you and don't even wait, don't feel bad about that. Follow their lead. If they leave space for you, then again, say it in the fastest, most efficient way you can, not focusing on saying every word in that stage direction. Oh, and the wild card situation I mentioned before uh, harkens back to a table read I was at. It was this cute little holiday film. I was brought in as male reader. There was one other female reader, and that was it for those utility readers. And about 30 seconds before the table read was to start, everyone had settled, the celebrities were there, the producers, everyone. One of the producers leans over and says, oh, Matthew, uh, could you also read stage directions? Cool. And I was like, okay, here we go. It was 
hilarious. At one point, I was literally reading stage directions in a scene and both characters in the scene because it was two male characters. It was wild. And to their credit, they ended up paying me twice as a way to compensate me for the extra work I did. But in short, do the work you were brought in to do. Thank the AD or whoever hired you and go home. I repeat, go home. Don't linger. If there's paperwork, it'll probably be digital nowadays. If you've been asked to stay to fill out paperwork, great, do that. But as soon as you've been released, please go home. It's not the time to schmooze with the crew or the other table readers. And for the love of everything that is holy, do not try to ask a celebrity for a photo. This is not the time or the place. If you do, you're tainting the experience. And now that person who hired you, which oftentimes is the casting director, will feel like you violated the one major reason they brought you in to begin with, which was your professionalism. And this might affect your future opportunities as it relates to auditions, especially if the casting director was in attendance at the table read and witnessed you asking for this photo. Just don't do it. Don't. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the nuances of being an actual cast member at a table read. First, be enthusiastic. You booked it. Yay, it's happening. And since the stakes are relatively low, I do emphasize relatively, then you can take this opportunity to be more outgoing, friendly, approachable, which is tough for an introvert. But be prepared to shake a lot of hands, see a lot of new faces, and hear a lot of new names. Assume everyone is important because they are just like you. And like the first part of the discussion, please arrive early so that you have time to get settled, especially if there's a new version of the script sitting in front of you. They may have sent you the blue revision last night or two days ago or a week ago when you got your deal memo, but the pink revision might be the one sitting in front of you. So you want to take some time to familiarize yourself and make sure there's not new dialogue or removed dialogue so that you're not surprised as it's happening. And the major note that I want to emphasize for being an actual cast member at a table read is to make sure you stay as engaged as possible when you're reading dialogue with that scene partner. Don't get lost in the script. Try to bring your eyes out of script and connect with your scene partner as much as you can. Even if their eyes are down the entire scene, try to keep yours up as much as you can. See, I once heard a casting director talk about being at a table read for a pilot, and there was an actor who had been cast as a series regular who was there, and the whole time he read his dialogue with his head down and with no energy in his voice. And the result? He got fired and recast. Don't be that actor. Other than that, enjoy the experience. If something is funny, laugh out loud. The writers, the director, producers, they'll want that feedback. See, they're nervous. They don't know that this script, that this project is going to work yet. And the studio has likely already invested millions of dollars. So stakes are high. Furthermore, they want to work with actors who want to be there. Make sense? Hopefully this video has illuminated some topics that weren't so obvious as it relates to table reads, even if you have been to quite a few table reads before. But as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.